Citrulline and arginine are some of the most sought after nitric oxide boosting supplements on the market today. They're gaining a lot of attention for their purported effects on both sports performance and even sexual performance. But really, how good are these supplements and what does the science and the real world have to say about them? Well, in this video, we'll go over what citrulline and arginine are, how they work and their potential benefits, and we'll also cover a whole lot more, including dosages and timing, as well as any possible side effects. If you rush for time, feel free to use the timestamps below to jump to the relevant sections of interest. Now let's get into it. Arginine is a semi-essential amino acid that is in many different foods, including meat, nuts, dairy, grains, and fruit. Citrulline, on the other hand, is a non-essential amino acid that is found predominantly in watermelon. Citrulline and arginine can both be synthesized by the body, but not in very large quantities. For instance, for the minimal recommended dose of citrulline, you'd need to consume around one half kilograms of watermelon. The proposed mechanism of what happens when you consume citrulline or arginine as an oral supplement is as follows. In simple terms, when you take arginine, most of it's acted upon by the arginase enzyme located in the small intestine and liver. This substantially reduces the availability of arginine in the bloodstream. However, unlike taking arginine, when you take citrulline, it is not acted upon by the arginase enzyme and captured by the small intestine or liver. Citrulline instead passes more freely to the kidneys where it's metabolized into arginine. This means that more arginine is released into circulation and more nitric oxide is produced as a result. Nitric oxide signals the vascular smooth muscle cells to relax and this dilation of the blood vessels promotes increased blood flow and improved circulation. And circulation is of course essential for various bodily functions, including maintaining blood pressure and delivering nutrients and oxygen to the tissues and organs of the body. Improved circulation is also the main mechanism by which citrulline and subsequent nitric oxide production is supposed to improve physical performance and enhance erectile function. It's also the main mechanism proposed for reducing muscle soreness and clearing out metabolic waste products. There are also some other promising effects of taking citrulline that are depicted in the graphic on the screen. As seen in the bottom right, citrulline supplementation may directly stimulate the division and growth of mitochondria via increased nitric oxide production. The mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells and responsible for ATP energy conversion, controlling cell growth and death, as well as a host of other functions. As you can see in the bottom left of screen, citrulline can also possibly increase the levels of ornithine and arginine, which are involved in nitric oxide production and mTOR activation. mTOR activation can increase protein synthesis and be the catalyst for muscle growth. Yet another argument for citrulline supplementation is that its effect on increasing nitric oxide production may clear out more ammonia from the liver and kidneys, which may help people with liver disease, kidney failure, or urea cycle disorders. Some other purported benefits of citrulline and subsequent nitric oxide production include improved immune response and tissue repair via better cell signaling. There have also been some larger systemic implications suggested when supplementing with citrulline too, and these possible effects include decreasing the risk of hypertension, atherosclerosis and inflammation, along with potentially reducing the risk of chronic diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. With all these factors and potential benefits, supplementing with citrulline should sound quite promising and you're probably wondering how to take it and what sort of dosages and loading is required. The following is based on the research, but this is not health advice, so please consult your doctor first before taking this on board. Most pre-workout formulas include less than a few grams of citrulline and usually tell you that it will take effect straight away if you consume it within an hour or so before training. However, most studies indicating the benefits of taking citrulline suggest much higher dosages that range anywhere between 3 to 10 grams. They also suggest taking it for 7 days straight or more before seeing any performance enhancing effects. Taking citrulline in the hour or two before training has been shown to have no significant effect on performance regardless of the dose and that includes for both aerobic as well as anaerobic forms of exercise. A consideration too here is that if you're taking citrulline malate, this should have a citrulline to malate ratio of 2 to 1 which is a specific ratio supported in most of the positive research. And this combo of citrulline and malic acid means that you will likely need a higher dose to see the same effects. Be mindful too that supplement companies often provide a lower one to one ratio as a way of reducing their costs and selling you less of the more active ingredient. The reason that citrulline is often combined with malate is that it is thought that this combo enhances citrulline bioavailability by supporting the synthesis of arginine. The theory is that more citrulline is effectively utilized this way to produce arginine and consequently nitric oxide. If you're consuming citrulline in this form, it should be a chemically bonded source of citrulline and malic acid. In other words, each molecule of citrulline is directly bonded to each molecule of malic acid. Supplement products that simply dump each component in separately and then mix them together are not the best choice. Although the recommended dosages of citrulline can vary from person to person and range anywhere from three to 10 grams per day, 
They all come with a proviso that it's best to start with a lower dose and build it up gradually so that the body and the digestive system tolerates it better. If you're on blood pressure meds or drugs for erectile dysfunction, it's wise to consult with your doctor first before taking citrulline. The same goes if you're a lady who is pregnant or breastfeeding. The interaction of citrulline with other pharmaceutical drugs for atherosclerosis, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease should also be investigated as some of these drugs have also been shown to affect citrulline metabolism and can have possible adverse effects when combined with this supplement. As for whether you can take arginine on top of citrulline, this has been shown to have no real benefit because if you're already taking the maximum dose of citrulline, the citrulline arginine pathway is already maximized for nitric oxide production and blood flow. Remember that taking citrulline increases arginine more than taking arginine itself. This is sort of like how beta alanine increases muscle carnosine more than taking carnosine itself as a supplement. If you're curious to learn more about how beta alanine works, see my other video on this supplement, which I'll link in the description of this video. And with that said, here's the part of the video where I look at citrulline and arginine more critically and see how these stack up against other proven supplements such as creatine and beta alanine. Before you get excited about citrulline, it's important to realize that most of the supposed effects and benefits of taking this supplement are the result of increased nitric oxide production in the body. The mechanisms of nitric oxide production are very complex and not fully understood. Although increased circulation is a proposed mechanism for the performance enhancing potential of citrulline, evidence supporting improvements in this effect with supplementation is scarce and inconsistent. I've read a few studies on citrulline and arginine, over 160 in fact, and for every study that shows citrulline to be an effective performance enhancer or health remedy, there are just as many saying it has little to no effect. Supplemental arginine has even less support, and a lot of these studies suggest that arginine is not a limiting factor for nitric oxide production, and that increasing its levels in the body may not have any additional benefits. Without more nitric oxide production, the improved circulation argument for citrulline falls flat in its face, along with the implications this has for improved physical performance and also erectile function. The case for improving erectile function is particularly weak with very few studies and less than impressive outcomes from those studies. Regarding the other possible health and performance benefits I mentioned earlier, there are some other counter arguments that are just as strong, which I'll go over now. Regarding citrulline's effects on the mitochondria, citrulline is mainly produced and transported out of the mitochondria, not into them. Therefore, citrulline supplementation may not affect mitochondrial function directly. And while citrulline may increase nitric oxide production and possibly have beneficial effects on mitochondrial disorders, the mechanisms and outcomes are not well understood and there still needs to be a lot more research in this area. When it comes to citrulline's effect on building muscle via mTOR activation, most of this evidence is based on animal studies or small human trials. There is still a lot more research needed to confirm the optimal dosage, timing and safety of taking citrulline to build muscle. Moreover, other factors such as nutrition, exercise type and intensity, as well as the duration can also influence a person's response to citrulline. And it should also be noted too that mTOR activation isn't necessarily good and excessive mTOR activation can have adverse effects on a person's health. As for the evidence that citrulline can decrease muscle soreness and increase recovery via nitric oxide production, this is mostly based on subjective measures such as perceived pain or discomfort and most studies have typically too small a sample size to accurately say whether the supplement worked anyway. Regarding citrulline's effect on clearing ammonia from the liver and kidneys, there is some evidence suggests that citrulline can help with this, but this is only under certain conditions such as when a person has a urea cycle disorder or a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In healthy individuals, the urea cycle is usually efficient enough to remove excess ammonia from the body and citrulline supplementation may not have a significant effect on ammonia levels. And although citrulline might improve the ammonia recycling process, this does not necessarily lead to lower ammonia levels in the body. Even the studies showing that citrulline can improve erectile function are very limited and the supplement can only possibly work if the cause of the erectile dysfunction is a lack of blood flow and not something else like an enlarged prostate. And as for the potential of citrulline to decrease the risk of various chronic diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease, this evidence is largely based on animal and in vitro studies. Longer term research on humans is needed but is limited and most studies cannot establish causality and quantify risk when it comes to human nutrition. Longer term studies of at least six months or more are warranted and you should be very skeptical of supplement companies or influencers who are making bold ergogenic or health claims. There is a lack of consensus when it comes to the effectiveness of nitric oxide boosting supplements and anyone who tells you that citrulline or arginine are proven supplements is either naive, trying to sell you something or both. Also be very suspicious of research studies that are sponsored by supplement companies who include citrulline and arginine in their products. If you're looking for supplements that can boost your performance, you might want to consider creatine, caffeine and beta alanine. These supplements have more evidence to support their effectiveness and they're also more affordable with creatine being half the price of citrulline. 
Overall, the scientific evidence supporting the use of nitric oxide supplements like arginine and citrulline is limited. There is insufficient evidence to show that these supplements improve exercise performance or that performance improvements, where present, are actually related to increased nitric oxide production. The evidence that these supplements can help with erectile dysfunction is even less prevalent and unconvincing. Arginine is less impressive than citrulline, both theoretically and in practice. It remains possible that arginine supplementation, when combined with other compounds, may enhance exercise performance in sedentary or untrained subjects. However, it appears it offers little benefit at all for athletes and those who are well trained. Citrulline supplementation holds some promise for enhancing performance both in and out of the gym, but there needs to be a lot more research on its effectiveness and validity. You're welcome to experiment with these supplements though, and let me know in the comments section about your experiences. Citrulline in theory should only work in moderate to high rep ranges in the gym, and there's more evidence for its effects on muscular endurance as opposed to max intensity and power output. And if you think citrulline must work because it gives you a better pump in the gym, just remember that pumps don't grow your muscles. Progressive overload does. Hence, you'll not see any improvements in muscularity or performance unless you're training harder. And that goes for any ergogenic supplement that you might take. That's all for citrulline and arginine for now. Tap the like button and subscribe if you got a lot out of this video. And make sure you check out my other supplement videos too that I've provided links for in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.